Hi everyone, welcome back to our small holding adventure. My name is Tracy and for this week's video we're going to have a look around the garden, around the vegetable plot, see what we've got going on. So I'm going to start from right outside the shed this time, so a slightly different position. You're going to have to forgive any background noise. We've got ducks, chickens chirping, we've got the next door neighbours are busy building something. Usually something tries to get involved. With the videos they never go totally quietly so this is the shed where i get all of my seeds and seeds and sowings and everything like that done then they're transferred over to the greenhouse which is just over here and everything starts off in the greenhouse after it's been sown in the shed but right now i'm going to flip the camera around and show you what we've got going on just behind my feet which is kind of the rescue ward shall we say at the minute you can see in the shed there's the um, the old milk bottles which we use for, for watering. So right over here in the corner we've got my mulberry tree. This was in the greenhouse over winter if you remember if you've watched some of my previous videos. So trying to look after that and make sure that it didn't get caught by the frost but now it's out here enjoying some of the sun, bit of shade and it gets watered, a really good water once a week or so it depends because the temperatures have been so hot lately um, it just really depends what it needs. Along here I've got gooseberries that I rescued, a couple of elderberry trees that I propagated myself, didn't think would work, but actually doing really well, so I'm pleased with those. And then these guys here are the tomatoes that were in the greenhouse. Um, they were in smaller pots and basically we were a, bit, a little bit unloved, so Grace and I found some larger pots. They're not ideal size, we could do with bigger, um, but just replanted them out here. Put a couple of little, seeing as though there's no wind lately we put a couple of little plant pots on the top so nobody goes poking their eyes out and there's a couple more over here now this variety are all black russian and you know what they are doing so well i wish that i'd taken a bit more care of them because these were free in a magazine and um, because i'd not picked them i thought oh well i'll throw them in myself i hadn't chosen this seed variety um so it kind of wasn't on my list um didn't really get as much attention as the other ones which it should have done because it seems like they're an absolutely fantastic fantastic little tomato i don't think that one actually i might be fibbing that one might not be black russian but these guys definitely are so yeah we've had quite a few tomatoes off those already i've also um just potted up using some of the leeks that i've got spare still just done an old bucket which has got holes in this had potatoes in we've eaten those now and just popped some leeks in there so just from just got a little a little um sort of nursery pot of leeks there I'll get those ones put in somewhere else too. Yeah, I'm really pleased with those. So moving straight from here, this is the polytunnel. Now this is the back, so we don't use this entrance. As you can see, I've got an um, unedited view of all the pots where I just try and store them out of the way. So there's so many at the moment. I'm moving straight onto these couple of buckets here. These are carrots, all sown in the, they're a bit thickly planted, some of them, but they're doing all right. But sown in, containers again because I just found in the ground they weren't doing very well for me until then they decided to take off but I'll show you that in a minute. Um, these are container potatoes doing really well. We've got sage and thyme just in an old trough planter here and then lavender just next to that that I just wanted to get going this year. Next to the lavender, we've got brambles. So these we put in ourselves and there's one there and then there's one here and one here. Now, why this guy isn't doing as well, I'm not so sure, but he's actually got, um, so these are blackberries or brambles, whichever you, whichever you know them as, but there's plenty of fruit coming on them. So although he might not look as bushy as the others, fruit wise they're doing well and the bees are interested in them but this one here maybe it's just a later variety so we've got some fruit coming but no blossoms out yet and the same for the the same for the one further along a couple of blossoms out on that one then we've got a couple of containers of courgettes they're actually uh, there's one ready to pick there nice and small one I'm going to take the flower off the end of that and this bed here, disastrous. We've got one onion, two onions going to seed, but I've already said to myself that those guys aren't gonna make it. Now this bed, 
Some of the onions are ready to come out, which I've been waiting for a couple of weeks as long as possible. But I'm going to be forced to now because these carrots, when I said the carrots hadn't worked very well, <laughs> these carrots have just taken off. So I need to get the onions out that are, that are in between them. And also, I think this was chicory. I put a line of that in and you know what? It's so bitter. I'm just not sure we can get away with it. If anyone's got any recommendations on, on chicory, um, I'm sure that's what it is. Or could it be endive? I've never grown them before, so you're gonna to have to help me out there. Either way, it's so bitter. Nobody really likes it, which is why it's just been left to do its own thing. We've got the kale that's actually coming on fantastically. It's been a little bit, a little bit eaten, but it's coming on fantastically still. What's the, uh... oh, it's okay. And then these are the runions, which are showing no interest in falling over whatsoever but they're gonna to have to come out soon to make space for other things. Spare cabbage that I had there, spare Swiss chard, and the kale. So all of the things, all of the non-onion things here were all interplanted with the onions where I had gaps. And then this bed is a prime example of why you need to leave your netting on. So if you remember in my previous videos, I showed you the netting um, and this had grown up to the netting. It was just pushing it up and I thought, well, it can't be doing anything now. Oh, cue the cabbage white I thought it can't be doing anything now because it's right on the edge and surely the cabbages can just lay on the netting and lay the leaves uh, lay the eggs through it well anyway I took the netting off and it's since been eaten quite badly so if you've got netting leave it on I mean these are all still totally fine there's uh, some broccoli we've actually had the big heads as you can see um, but, the, but broccoli leaves are edible as well, as I've said before, so it would have been nice to be able to, to eat some of those. But I'm gonna get in here and give this bed a good look at because <laughs> there's plenty of weeds, as always, but this was overshadowed. This little Swiss chard was overshadowed. Hopefully that'll come, come on well now. But yeah, so that bed is, um, it's still doing fine. Everything is still totally edible. It's just not looking as pretty as it did when it was under the netting. So I'm an absolute netting advocate now. Right behind me, so greenhouse, get your bearings. There's the greenhouse. We have this cold frame, which is always propped open at the moment um, by a tool of some description. Uh, everything is growing up so much out of it that it'll just squash them, but they're all peppers in there. Let me show you. Got some fantastic ones coming. That's a Romano. Yeah, there's some, there's some great ones. Most of them are not very hot. Can't wait to see what this one is. It's so bushy, but no peppers on it yet. So we'll see, we'll see. Then we've got my tomato tree, which is doing nothing. So I'm not sure about that. Maybe it doesn't fruit till next year. I'll have to do some research on that. Moving into this little gap here, this is mace. This is just a herb that I wanted to buy because people said it wasn't very popular and I felt sorry for it. So I'm just leaving it do its thing this year. If you've ever grown it before, let me know. It's not the mace that you know from getting the spice from the shop. We've got some orange carrots growing back here, a little bit crowded. We've got these potatoes that I'll show you every time that are starting to die back. So I'll be excited to harvest those guys. This is spearmint starting to flower. So I'm going to take a load of this. The potatoes were actually um, flopping onto it, which is why it's kind of all, point, all, fit, all facing forward at the moment. Um, but I'm going to harvest pretty much all of that and get that dried for teas. Well, and for fresh eating. And these are rainbow carrots. This sorry looking thing here is an opolka um, tomato, which is absolutely absolutely fantastic, but uh, it just keeps falling over itself and I need to figure out a better trellising option. So I've lent it against the wheelie bin, which is our um, which is our drainage from the greenhouse and goes into the bin and then that fills with water. But at the moment it's also standing up this drunken tomato. But yeah, these are roasting um, tomatoes that you would use for, for kind of pasta sauce and sauces and things because they're really meaty with less um, less juice. So I'm going to be keeping the seeds from this guy this year because I only had five this year. Here we've got some of the, I think these are the Greek giganti beans, maybe the maybe they're the sour ones. And remember I said I needed to sand them up and get them all neat and tidy? Yeah, that didn't happen so I've decided to, um, to just leave these on the floor and they'll produce and I'll keep those for 
for shelling anyway for, for drying over the winter so I'm not too worried about that. So around here we've got more beans, dwarf beans, it's a lot more shaded here. Comfrey is going nuts again, taking over everything, so needs a good cutting. Bees are very active. But these beans should come on in their own time because it's so shaded. They're, um, they're not coming on as quickly as some of the others, but still, it's doing well. And I'm looking forward to what these guys look like here. I mean, there's absolutely loads here. They'll be fine on the ground. Um, but yeah, they should really be on trellis, but that didn't happen. I need to figure out a really good trellising system for next year for all sorts of things. That's been one of my problems this year that the tomatoes, the cucumbers, anything that'll trellis, I try to do with canes and it's just not working out that well. And we've got a rogue, rogue potato in this bed. Cabbage is looking well. Right, let's go back over here and I'll show you what's in that bed. Need to duck through here first, come with me. There's the shed where we started. These are beans that are waiting to go in. We've got spring onions in here, another tomato. Okay, so here we've got some tester onions um, that I grew myself very late, but I thought let's have a go. Asparagus peas, rosemary lettuce, more onions. I thought I'm gonna give it a go anyway. This bed here was the complete onion bed. So, schoolgirl error was some of this. I planted this up in the autumn, as you should, and left it, and then the chickens got in, the cats got in, everything had a go that shouldn't, and pulled out a lot of the, um, the onions. So I was left with um, onion sets all over the place. I tried to get them back in as best I could, but inevitably there were some gaps. And what I decided to do was get some other onions that were offered to me off a very good friend of mine, but I didn't realize at the time that they wouldn't develop or ready to be harvested until September time. And so my onions are coming out now in July, end of July, beginning of August, and these other ones need another month or so. So I'm gonna close this gate because there's a chicken thinking about coming in. Should have closed that earlier. So, now I've got onions that are harvesting now and I've got onions that aren't harvesting until September, October time. And I thought, oh, so I've got to have a bed that's very scattered with different things, but why change the habit of a lifetime, eh? So I'm going to show you which ones are which and how I'm telling the difference. So do you see the very kind of conical nature of this one that's got a blue bottle on it? Um, that compared to one of the more flatter onions there so you can see the difference so this one are the ones that I was given this is a Kelsey variety apparently they grow huge but I'm hoping they're good for eating because I'm not really bothered if they grow huge if they don't taste very nice and this is one that I grew from a set from Wilco's so these are lovely perfect and they've been storing very well for me in the past these guys are brand new to me but these are going to have to stay in while these guys are going to go into the storage so yeah I think I'm, what I'm going to have to do I've taken out the ones that I had where I had the gaps I've obviously put the other varieties in so I'm going to replant where I've got space so what I've done down here this was where all the garlic was so I've harvested lots of garlic I've replanted with celery the leeks that I mentioned I'd already put some beans in where I had gaps in the onions so now I've just put more leeks in where the gaps are and I'll continue moving up doing that as a harvest so these beans have been in for a while that onion's ready to come out a couple of onions a couple of the other ones are ready to come out and then I'll get this row planted up as well probably with beetroot and things but some of these beans I've just picked them um but they're doing is there one there there's one one I've missed come out they're doing amazing really good so I'm hoping to get quite a few of those for the freezer the other ones over in the bed I've just showed you would be the same if they weren't in the shade those are the potatoes that I've already shown you. Around here, just little pots of joy. Strawberry spinach, pineapple sage, strawberry mint, purslane, is it winter purslane possibly? More strawberry spinach. This is a bought one, this is marjoram. 
little bit of lettuce and this is the flat leaf parsley and these two are experiments um i think one's ditney and one oh, i can't remember i'll put it on the screen if i remember but yeah these two just experiments this is my one of my experimentation corners we've got fever few the chives that i chopped back and came back very aggressively Oh, you want some water, do you? Hang on. Slight interruption there. Sorry, guys. Those would uh, yet again knock the water over. Anyway, where was I? So we have now looked at what we refer to as the vegetable garden. Um, we put all of this in ourselves when we moved in here. None of this existed. It was just grass. If I was to do it again now, I would do it differently. I wouldn't have the raised beds. They do look a little bit prettier, I think, but, but practically, I would probably just do it in ground. Stephen might have a different opinion, but that's my opinion. Anyway, so now here we've got um, Jerusalem artichoke in the containers. I'm not sure if I'm going to continue with them because when, when we go into the veg plot, as we call it, um, you'll see that they just don't give up and i was trying i thought that i'd eliminated them which is just ridiculous because you can never eliminate them so i'm not sure that i need them in this bucket and i could do with this bucket to put the tomato tree plant in because i think that needs a bigger bucket anyway decisions next to it we've got some beans that i did trellis and moving along we have got squash that I'm going to plant today. I'll show you where they're going in. They should be in already, but they're not. We've got leeks in containers. Let me flip you around actually so you can get a better look. Leeks in containers because last year my leeks failed drastically and I wanted to ensure every eventuality. This courgette has been harvested load, so it's not very prolific at the moment, but it's because we've harvested it so much. This is all salad in here. So these guys are obviously starting to rise to flower but they're still perfectly edible and then what I did was just interplant them with more fresh lettuce so when these ones come out these will be able to to do their thing more lettuce uh, no it's not what they called leeks more leeks um a planter waiting to be planted so I'm going to get something in that soon horseradish um more courgette weeds then we've got tomatoes that ended up they didn't have they didn't have anywhere else so they're here at the moment but they're doing very well and oh my goodness we're at the polytunnel also known as the jungle oh wow right so starting off <laughs> i'll explain in a sec these are tomatillos that are actually in these two tubs here now i didn't realize how big tomatillos get or how much they sprawl so these need to be moved I might end up putting them against this fence maybe. I think I'll do that. I think I've just made that decision um, because they're not gonna be any good in here. Now with the polytunnel, the tomatoes, what we decided to do this year was plant them right at the edge, so closest to the um, walkway and trellis them up strings, which work just fine, except the tomatoes are prolific. I have been chopping off, taking the side shoots out and they just got they still just went absolutely crazy and to be honest the side shoots are really prolific as well so i left the ones in the end um but it does mean that we can't walk down the middle of the polytunnel because they're just flopping in so next year what i'll do is actually put the tomatoes in the middle of the bed so not right at the back which is what we did the first year and then they didn't have enough room to grow up high then this year we've put them right at the front because they had all of the height but now we can't get in there either so next year We'll put them in the middle and hopefully we'll be able to walk down, keep a better control over them, still grow the things in front of them potentially as well. I'll give you a little look in there. It's just going to look like a bit of a jungle mess, to be honest. But even so, let's have a look. Even with this door open, it is so warm in here. So if you actually look to the side of the tomatoes, we do have other things in here. So we've got pepper plants and things which are doing well, but not as well as they would be if the tomatoes weren't in here and actually this polytunnel is quite shaded we've also got beetroot down that end now the tomatoes down the middle can you see how well they're doing they're doing better than the greenhouse in some ways so yeah i'm just letting them do their thing and on this side 
this broccoli is ready to come out now we've been living off that it's been fantastic so I highly recommend that as always the broccoli stromboli or stromboli and we've got a couple of dodgy looking peppers in here <laughs> and a few lettuce down there so this is what survives will survive from the back of here but this is predominantly predominantly for these tomatoes but they are doing really well these little guys here are as well how come the ones that you leave alone do the best it tells you everything doesn't it right so that is the vegetable garden where we've just been now let's go into what we call the plot so straight away as we go in we've got lots of herbs we've got marshmallow and lots of mints and coriander that's gone to seed we stood right next to the tea bed which is essentially looking like just a wildflower meadow. Happy little bee. The borage is doing amazing. I have noticed the flowers die off quite quickly. We've got some dill here, the rosemary, there's tarragon in there as well. Believe it or not, we've tried to stay on top of the nasturtiums, but they are thugs. So we're eating them. You can eat nasturtium flowers and leaves and borage flowers and borage leaves. Now the sunflower. This is essentially for our winter tea, as in drinkable herbal teas. Um, a lot of the calendula I've let go over because I want it to reseed for next year, but I will be picking more of these flowers. You can see that's where, <laughs> that's where Grace got in yesterday to uh, collect some of the flowers for me. So yeah, there's plenty to go around. Lavender's doing well. Chamomile is starting to go over, so I'm gonna get picked what's left. See if that comes back. Just all sorts of activity going on in this borage. And then there are other herbs in here, which um, are just getting swamped, really. This bed here, we have creeping thyme, which is just lovely. Uh, I think these are called salvia. I'm sure you can eat them, but then it also said you can have hallucinogenic um, symptoms after it. So we'll see. <laughs> Depends. Maybe on a Friday night. And this is the perennial kale. Brilliant. Highly recommend this one. Taunton Dean variety. We've got rhubarb here that has been getting killed off by the thugs of the raspberries because they're just reshooting everywhere. So I'm a bit disappointed with the raspberries for doing that. <laughs> We've got another rhubarb looking neat and tidy. There's a few strawberries in the back here, but these are summer fruiting raspberries. And to be honest, I'm not overly keen on them. I much prefer the autumn, the autumn fruiting ones. This next bed has got the beans in. So I think these are Barlottis. Let's have a look. Yeah, so can you see there the, um, oh, there's a better shot, hang on. Wow, there you go. You can see there, the Barlotti beans are doing really well. So this, all of these here are Barlottis and then we move up to the yellow, the yellow ones. So I'm going to be picking these today, doing extremely well. These guys have suffered a little bit from slugs and snails and things. We've got a squash that's going to take over that hedge and that's fine by me. Now these peas, very disappointed they look amazing and then when you get into them let me show you have them when you get into them they're absolutely beautiful they've been suffering from pea moth I'm gonna find you one so typically the ones that i'm opening haven't got any in but there's been multiple ones where we've been suffering from pea moths. So there's that like a little caterpillar about, I don't know, one and a half centimetres long that burrows into them. Um, I've never had it before, so I didn't prepare for it. So these peas haven't been netted to stop insects or anything like that. Um, and unfortunately it's got in and, and destroyed quite a few of the crops that we harvested of the pea crops that we harvested. So what that means is we well, don't know about it. There's no visible damage. You don't know about it till you're actually harvesting them. And it's like, well, do you want to go to the trouble of, of harvesting every single one to potentially lose half of them? So we'll see. I'm not too sure, but these, they're looking, 
they're not looking too bad um but i have a feeling that they'll be coming out pretty soon but next to them we have the broad beans even more broad beans <laughs> they're doing fantastic and these guys will be ready for harvesting there's quite a few that are ready for harvesting now and what I'll have to do is just blanch these and get them in the freezer just like I did with the other broad beans, eat some fresh of course and then make way for this bed to make way for the next lot of winter things that are going in. Now moving on to the next bed, this is the strawberry bed and we've had about a kilo of strawberries which might sound a lot but we should have been having much more, much more from this bed and it's just been terrible this year. I'm not sure what's going on maybe it was the amount of rain we had early on but what we have had has been covered in mold and it's just been not very nice so super disappointed with the strawberries this year but never mind there's a pick your own near us so we're going to go and have a adventure over to that we've also got nasturtiums in here which i'm quite happy for them to self seed because we'll use the flowers and the leaves at the back it's really weedy this is a walking is it cabbage stick um no walking stick cabbage uh, which should get nice and tall and very prolific once i get these weeds out so this is on the job the next lot of jobs to do one thing at a time yeah those strawberries oh. here we have the asparagus in the next bed so this was lovely this year and now we've just left it obviously to uh to go over to ferns and then to die off don't want to harvest it for too long or else you'll kill it off and it won't be any good. Now this bed here, these are just freshly planted. You can see that these guys have just been put in. These are my fresh winter brassicas, doing very well. And this bed here was the one that I harvested the onions from. Oh, there's a rogue one just there. So the plan for these two beds. So Grace Blasted this morning, my daughter has just done a job of taking out all of the the peas that you can see that are at the back there um these had gone over we'd finished them we've we've had a lot this was from the the munch too um no sugar snaps sugar snaps sorry variety um so i'm going to go through take the rest of these weeds out take the canes out and get this planted up with cauliflower for the winter these broad beans are the same quite prolific ready for harvesting and we'll get those into the freezer blanch them and get them into the freezer so this bed will also be empty very soon this bed just needs raking over taking out a couple of the weeds and also get planted those squash that were outside the polytunnel are going in here that i showed you and then this bed here are the outdoor tomatoes and they are doing quite well um i tend to let them do their thing but they're they're coming on nothing's ripening yet but that's okay Oh, what's the matter with you? Are you a fledgling? Oh, well done. Just learning to fly. You're doing very well. That's okay, I'm not going to hurt you. It's all quiet, to show you. Oh, there's the duck eggs just being collected. So these, these are the closer to the hedge that you get, the worse they're doing. And essentially that's just the shade. So um, we've got this big U hedge here that runs all the way along the plot. And unfortunately it does provide a lot of shade. Um, so you can see where the sun is, it's fantastic. And then as we move down here, it gets less and less, but that's okay. Again, we'll, we'll work with what we've got. That hedge gives me the privacy that I need. So this bit here is very much where we're working on a day-to-day -day basis at the moment. So I normally kind of give weekly updates on the vlog and, and this is where we're working right now. So the, the bed that I've just shown you that's got the winter brassicas in, that's obviously finished. Just letting those grow now, they're covered in netting to keep the butterflies off. But these beds here, the tomatoes should be growing soon. It's about keeping those weed free, watering when necessary. And these two beds harvesting the broad beans and getting the beds planted back up um, with the winter crops. So potentially I'll put some um, muck on them, some uh, the rotted horse muck, but we'll see. I'm not sure if they'll need it yet. So yeah, this is what we're working on this week. Go past the extremely large hedge. These are the artichokes, the Jerusalem artichokes I was referring to. They should not be here. 
and no matter what we do every year we think we've got them and we haven't so I might just give in and just admit that they own that patch of land and not grow them in the pots. Here we've got um, lots of frizzy, frizzy endive is it called? Can't remember the exact name of it. Not too keen on it so I'm not sure if we'll grow that again. We've got carrots some of which were uh, have germinated well and then closer to here they've just not germinated. We've got some gigantic parsnips coming on really well. Also some good carrots there though in this row between the parsnips. Then we've got leaf celery here. Sunflowers just starting to come out and enjoy themselves. We've got more beans that I actually did trellis but they're totally surpassing the top of the canes. They're two metre long canes as well. And then we've got the kalettes here. One, two, three. This is another Taunton Dean kale. At the back we've got potatoes that are ready to come out so they were second earlies. Nice looking cabbage, Brussels sprouts, a couple of Brussels sprouts and then more calendula amongst the dandelion leaves so we'll be harvesting those. We've got lots of weeds at the back, I haven't got around to these but we're also getting some green beans. So there's a few plants with some baby green beans on and these cauliflower I'm not sure if they're going to do anything might be too close to the hedge you can see the potatoes that are referred to they're just starting to uh, to die back a little bit some Swiss chard in the distance and there's some beetroot between these carrots which I've been harvesting quite a lot of we've got leeks and the perennial onions and this patch here has all just been harvested with beetroot so this courgette plant is quite happy now because it was totally engulfed by everything. So this is getting ready to be replanted as well. And moving on to the next bed, this is a fruit patch. We've got the gooseberries that I've showed you previously. And then we've got the other gooseberry bushes. There's three amongst this that need harvesting. The raspberries are coming on fantastically. These are my favourite raspberries. Don't know if there's any to show you because they tend to get eaten really quickly. There's some coming on. Now, I don't know what variety these are because they were here when we moved in, but they are lovely, so okay. tasty. And then here, so the raspberries are obviously doing what they do and taking over. And then in here, we've got the black currants and the red currants and at the very end the white currants right next to the rhubarb so i'm harvesting this rhubarb and it's just not going anywhere it's just growing and growing and growing which is fantastic i've got a lot to do with rhubarb so with the rhubarb um there's absolutely loads that we can do you can do your standard crumbles jellies jams gins cordials syrups um, there's, there's absolutely all sorts so we've a wine don't forget the wine I'm still going to do a video on that um, but yeah rhubarb is one of the best perennial plants for me to have so if you can get some I would now behind me here this is our mini orchard area um, so we've got apple trees pear trees I'm gonna go out this door gate and back in that one and show you a couple of things that we've got going on there Right, let's flip this camera around. We've got some nice apples coming. These are cooking apples. We've got loads of recipes waiting for these guys. And then we've got a cherry tree with no cherries on it. I think the birds got to all of these this year. We had a very good year last year for those, so I'm not complaining. We've got an almond tree and an apricot tree that has also got nothing on it disappointing and unfortunately the pear tree is just not doing very well at all this year but never mind we've got a fantastic eating tree eating tree eating apple tree here these are called discovery highly highly recommend that variety of apple if you're looking for an early apple variety in england some really nice ones come in and then here <laughs> This is Lovage. This absolute huge mess needs chopping down. Lovage is another thug. 
good to replace the celery and use in stocks and things. It's a lot stronger than celery, so don't use it like for like, but it's uh, it's a good sub. But it is a bit of a thug. Another little berry bush here. I think that one's chokeberry. And then over here, we've got just the berry. Nothing yet produced. These guys are brand new this year, but you can see the growth it's put on. So the brown bits are last year's growth. And then it's got this year's growth. Nothing on that one just yet. Doesn't seem to be a fantastic year for apples. Some of them are doing, ooh, some of them are doing better than others. But I'm a bit disappointed with that. Anyway, so now we're going to take a walk down to, down to the other paddock through the chicken. And this is the plot that we've got at the bottom where the lambs got into. So this is through our other orchard area which has got some fantastic apples coming. These trees are old, 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 well-established, fantastic trees. We've got damson, we've got plum, but again, they just don't seem to be doing fantastically. Don't know, we, I, you tend to find that though, you have years that are um, better than others, shall we say. It's such a nice day because it's been far too hot to do this recently. <laughs> There's our patch of nettles. So if anyone needs any nettles, just let me know. But yeah, it's been far too hot to do this recently. So I'm pleased that it's cooled off a little bit today, meaning I can actually get in and show everybody what's going on. I'd like to do the, um, the plot two is monthly. I'll get better at them, I promise. But let me know if you're interested in that. And to be honest, even if you're not, <laughs> it'll be good for me. Here's the ducks. It'll be good for me to keep a record of how things are doing. So noisy. Right, so this is the, this is the plot that we were working on. You see me in here quite a bit. So let's start over here, potatoes. The potatoes that we put in, you may or may not remember, had suffered hugely um, from being eaten by vermin and from just the ground, the general ground that's in. We've, we've had every kind of catastrophe with them, but especially the ones down here, you can see they're doing amazing. So these are flowering fantastically. Yeah, doing, doing really well. So I'm looking forward to, um, to harvesting those guys. So that brings us to the back of the plot. This is a little compost area that I'm working on. Um, it will get bigger because here there's no point in trying to grow anything because it's so close to these big trees. They just suck the life out of the ground. So what better place to have your compost spot? This here is just keeping the weeds suppressed and I'm just going to build this up layer by layer. This is going to get all of the ground membrane covering it. But I haven't done that just yet. Right, so behind me then, working backwards, we've got spaghetti squash. We've got a different type of, I think they're the uchikuri, is that how you pronounce it? And over here, we've got another variety, um, which Charles Dowden recommended, I think Marianne something, I'll put it on the screen. We've got lots of these in and I'm just hoping that they're going to take over the ground with their squash vine leaves and mean that I don't have to mulch all of this. I'll put ground membrane down because the leaves will do it, but we'll see. There's a couple more really good, sp sp <laughs> really good spaghetti squash there more under here but the squash they seem to be doing well i'm pleased another one over there and then what you can see i'm trying to do here i've been layering cardboard down in strips and then covering it with different mulches that i've got um this won't get planted into this year i'll just keep adding to that and then <laughs> this row up here 
now looks as if it's got nothing in it but it does have those cabbages in which are coming out today they are fantastic cabbages absolutely fantastic but yeah the grass is just um, starting to take over so we need to get these out before they get eaten by other things because the grass will be bringing in all of the extra bugs and things then in here we've got the um, netted brassicas that we've put in after the lambs got to the others we've got swede here that i've thinned out i was a bit frightened about thinning it out but it's worked out really well and they're doing miles better for it we've got celery nine lots of celery tomatillo and pepper we've got other outdoor tomatoes here this savoy cabbage is uh is looking good and the tomatillos are taking over Look how well this net's working. Three of them trying to get in. So needless to say, we've got brassicas in here. Oh, this is all what we would have if the lambs hadn't eaten it. We had like 50 different varieties of the, uh, sorry, 50 different plants of different varieties in. Oh, never mind, never mind. So these are looking good and then we've got more tomatoes in cardboard boxes because that's what I had to hand and they're looking really good too. So despite everything um, we're actually eating out of the garden every single day at the moment so all our meals, um, all our main meals are coming from the garden from the different vegetable plots so we're eating seasonally producing most of our own food at the moment because obviously we raise our own meat as well so this time of year is when it's nice and easy apart from the weeds um to live off the land so to speak but we're not forgetting about the winter period um we're sowing and sowing as much as i can for that as well because obviously it's easy to forget about that when you're sort of eating in abundance from the garden so next week look out for more greenhouse updates i'll show you what's going on in there lots of tomatoes loads of peppers the peppers are doing great i'm really pleased with them this year much better than the tomatoes i'm not getting anywhere near as many tomatoes as i hope to get but we're, we're getting enough so that's that's okay we're, we're eating from there every day so i'm not going to get too upset about that but as you can see so much work to be done mostly in the uh, weeding area and mostly in replanting so I'm going to go and get on with some of that. The sun has come out even more. It's absolutely boiling again. I think I'm going to have to go and get changed. The whole black is not doing it in the sun. So I hope you've enjoyed this uh, this walk around the gardens and seeing what we've got, got going on at the end of July, moving into early August. And I'll do one of these a month if you're interested. If not, it'll be for my benefit. But thanks for joining me today. And I hope you leave me a comment. I love to interact with everybody. Let me know what you think. Let me know what's going on for you for sowing and growing. Um, and let me know what other content you might like to see but for now I'm going to sign off and say thanks for watching look out for the next video coming as well please give us a like and subscribe and drop me a comment below take care guys